Hi there, welcome to my fourth tutorial on indices. What I want to look at today is four basic index laws. We've got these four laws up the top here. I'm going to do an example of each to show you how they each work. So have a look at the first one then. n to the negative a is equal to 1 over n to the a. So with this example here we've got 2 to the negative 3. That's going to give us 1 over 2, but if you notice here the negative a goes to a positive a on the bottom, so that would be 2 to the power of 3. Then working that out, we're going to have 1 over 2 to the 3 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Second law here, n to the 0 equals 1. Well anything raised to the power of 0 is always going to equal 1. But it's a good idea to see why this is. So if we have a look at this one, 3 to the 0, we already know that 3 to the 0 will be 1, just by looking at the rule. However, let's see why that works out. Let's say, for example, we had 3 squared. And we divide that by 3 squared. Well, using our, a previous rule that we looked at, if you have 3 to the 2 divided by 3 to the 2, we subtract the indices. So this becomes 3, 2 take away 2, 3 to the 0. But now let's actually work these out. 3 squared is 9. 3 squared is 9. And 9 divided by 9 is actually going to give us 1. So that's why this works out the way it does. Next rule here, example 3. We've got n to the half equals the square root of n. So whenever you see a number raised to the power of a half, it's exactly the same as finding the square root of the number. So for example 3, 9 to the half is the same as the square root of 9, which gives us an answer of 3. Square root of 9 is 3. Same uh, way that this works here. If you've got n to the third, whereas it was n to the half was the square root, then n to the third becomes the cube root. So if I've got 8 to the third here, if we write that in its root form, it's going to become the cube root of 8. Now the cube root of a number is the number times by itself by itself again to give you this answer. The answer to that is going to be 2. OK, so we've looked at these four rules here. We can combine those rules to do a much more complicated problem. If we have a look at this one here, example 5, we've got a fraction here, 4 over 25, raised to the negative a half. We've actually got two rules here. We've got the negative term, the first law here, and we've got to the power of a half, which is the third law here. We need to do them separately. So if we start off, I'm going to apply this rule first onto this question. So I've got 1 over 4 over 25, and then the negative half becomes a half when it's moved to the bottom there. I can now apply the second law, raising it to the power of a half, is the same as finding the root of the number. So this then becomes 1 over the square root of 4 over 25. The square root of 4 over 25 we get just by finding the root of the numerator and the root of the denominator. So this then becomes 1 over 2 over 5. So we've got a fraction here within a fraction. If we get this situation, what happens when we're dividing a number by a fraction? We take the denominator move it up to the top and times it by the number. So in this case we have 5 times 1 which gives us 5 and that will go over 2 and our answer becomes 5 over 2 or you can write it in its mixed number form as 2 and a half.